Good morning, my name is Leah Flax from the MTA. I will serve as this morning's hearing officer for this virtual public hearing, the third of eight virtual hearings, including two satellite hearings to provide the public with the opportunity to comment on the proposed changes in MTA fares and tolls affecting transportation on MTA subways, buses, commuter railroads, bridges, tunnels, and the Staten Island Railway. To make the public aware of these hearings, advertisements were published in 13 print media outlets, including multilingual outlet outlets throughout the region. Notice of these hearings were also published in press releases and posted on the MTA website, along with multilingual signs and digital displays in stations, buses, and trains. The MTA also provided notice of the hearings on social media. The MTA's fair and toll hearing website new.mta.info forward slash 2020 hearings describes these proposals in detail. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, we are conducting this meeting virtually via Zoom's online platform and conference call feature with a live stream available on the MTA fair and toll hearing website. Governor Cuomo's executive order 202 76 permits the MTA to conduct these fair and toll hearings remotely. This hearing is an opportunity for the members of the public to comment on the proposals. Members of the MTA Board of Directors and senior staff are here to listen. So board members will be listening, not commenting. MTA subject matter experts are available to answer your questions in the Zoom Q&A function this morning. The Q&A function is available only if you are logged into the Zoom webinar online, and it is located on the lower portion of your Zoom window. If you're attending via Zoom online, type your question into the Q&A function, and a subject matter expert will answer your question if it is deemed to pertain to the subject of this hearing. In addition to the remaining virtual hearings, there are several other ways you can provide comments, ask questions, or make requests. We encourage the public to comment via the fair and toll hearing website, new.mta.info forward slash 2020 hearings. You may also send a letter to MTA Government and Community Relations regarding fares and crossing charges virtual public hearing to Broadway, New York, New York, 10004, or call the public hearing hotline at 646-252-6777. Telephone agents are available from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. And I should emphasize that every bit of public comment including spoken comments today and at other hearings, all correspondence, emails, phone calls, and comments will be transcribed and incorporated into the official record and provided to all the board members so that they can review them prior to final consideration of the fair and toll proposals. For the record, today's date is December 3rd, 2020, and the time is 10.06 a.m. Now let me briefly describe the procedure for today's hearing. I will call the names of people who have registered to speak in the order in which they are registered. The one exception here is that if you've already spoken at a virtual public hearing during this round of hearings, you will be moved to the end of the queue. After all registrants who have not spoken at a previous virtual hearing have had an opportunity to speak. We open registration for today's hearing on Monday, November 23rd, 2020 at 10 a.m. and registration closed at 5 p.m. yesterday. We will remain here until all registered speakers are heard. All participants will be muted upon joining the Zoom webinar. When your name is called, please enable your camera and microphone by clicking the camera and microphone icons on the bottom of your Zoom screen. We'll give you 10 seconds to turn your camera and microphone on before moving on to the next speaker. In the event your name is called and you're not present, we will read your name again in the order it was initially called at the end of the list of pre-registered speakers. We will close the proceedings 15 minutes after the last name is called once we exhaust the list of speakers. When you begin speaking, please provide us your name and any affiliation you wish to announce so that we have it for the record. And this is important. So that we can be fair to all speakers, we ask that you keep your remarks to our limit of two minutes. The countdown clock on the screen will provide auditory and visual cues when there are 30 seconds remaining to conclude your remarks. If you run out of time, remember you can submit complete written testimony to supplement your oral testimony. 
Cart captioning and American Sign Language interpreters are available at this hearing. To access captioning at the bottom of the screen, select CC, and you'll be able to turn on or enlarge the captions based on your preference. You can also view the entire transcript for context if needed. Users will not need to adjust their screens to see ASL. Again, I want to note that in addition to the remaining virtual hearings, there are several other ways you can provide comments, ask questions, or make requests. We encourage the public to comment via the Fair and Toll hearing website, new.mta.info forward slash 2020 hearings. You may also send a letter to MTA Government and Community Relations regarding fares and crossing charges virtual public hearing to Broadway, New York, New York, 10004. Or call the public hearing hotline at 646-252-6777. Telephone agents are available from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Thank you all for listening to all of that. And now let me introduce the MTA Board of Directors and senior executive staff that are here with us today. Today with us are Commissioners Borelli, Brown, Khaleesi, Fleischer, Law, Lynn, Mahaltzis, and Tessitore. From MTA leadership with us today are Pat Foy, Tom Quigley, Craig Cipriano, Phil Eng, Kathy Rinaldi, and Daniel DiCrescenzo. I will now turn it over to MTA Chairman and CEO Pat Foy for opening remarks. Uh, thanks, Leah. Uh, thank you all for being with us this morning as we begin the MTA standard biennial review of fair and toll policy. We recognize that this year is anything but standard. The pandemic has affected and impacted us all in profound and lasting ways, which makes this process more complex and challenging this year. Since 2011, the MTA has implemented fare adjustments roughly every two years, and a proposed change to fares and tolls with a 4% revenue yield, equal to 2% per year, has previously been included in next year's and the following year's budgets. To be clear, the current fair proposals are not intended to address our current financial crisis caused by COVID-19. As you know, as a result of COVID-19, the MTA is facing the worst financial crisis in its history, far exceeding anything we've ever dealt with in the past, even the Great Depression in the 1930s. Because of precipitous declines in ridership and revenues, the MTA is facing a projected $16 billion deficit over the next few years. We have aggressively sought additional emergency aid from the federal government to, to fill our budget gap, but have so far been unsuccessful. The election of President-elect Joe Biden has given us some hope on that front, but we are still facing the prospect of divided government in Washington, which could threaten the progress of another stimulus package with enough support for what the transit industry, particularly the MTA needs. So we must plan for the worst and hope for the best. This means we have some very tough decisions ahead, which could include service changes and reductions in positions and a continued freeze of the MTA's capital plan. To be clear, we don't wanna do any of these things, but our dire financial outlook may give us no choice if we don't receive sufficient federal funding. We are committed to reviewing a wide variety of options to find to determine the best way forward and adjusting plans as needed based on the latest developments. For the topic at hand today, the biennial fare and toll policy review, our goal is to minimize impact on New Yorkers in these difficult times. Still, we know that any increase will hurt New Yorkers, especially those in communities that depend on the MTA most. It's clear that this was one of the most uncertain and challenging times ever, not just for, for the MTA, but for all of us. We appreciate your taking the time this morning to make your voice heard on these proposals. This is a tough time for all New Yorkers and we remain dedicated to keeping this region moving as our employees have done heroically this entire year. The MTA remains on high alert and will do everything we can to protect the health and safety of our customers and employees as we continue navigating through uncharted times. We look forward to hearing from all of you today. Thanks for attending. Thank you, Chairman Foy. 
We've also been joined by Commissioner Cortez Vasquez. Today we have 62 registered speakers. We will now call our first public speaker of the morning. When your name is called, there will be a brief transition to allow you to turn on your camera and unmute your microphone. The first speaker is Council Member Stephen Mateo, followed by Assembly Member Robert Carroll. The meeting. Thank you. Uh, my name is Stephen Matteo. I'm the council member representing uh, the Mid-Island portion of Staten Island. Um, I want to focus my testimony on the possible reduction or even elimination of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge resident discount. Such, such an action, if taken, would have a devastating effect on Staten Islanders. As you know, Staten Island is unique since we are forced to pay a toll if we wish to travel to any part of the city by vehicle. Residents of other boroughs have several free options for interborough travel. We don't have that luxury. The Verrazano is all we have. We also have different difference since we do not have a viable public transportation system connecting us to the rest of the city. Try taking the existing public transportation system from Staten Island to parts of Queen of the Bronx. It's just not realistic to expect such folks to not to drive when making those trips. Eliminating our discount would fundamentally change the implied bargain between Staten Island and the MTA. For years, the MTA has recognized our unique position and sought to help in the form of the resident discount that has helped bring more fairness to a fundamentally unfair and equitable system. Our resident discount should be considered sacrosanct since it is a recognition of decades long transportation equities and seeks to write them in a meaningful way. Let's consider the numbers. The current easy pass rate is $12.24 and the non easy pass rate is $19. The lowest current toll for Staten Islanders who make three or more trips a month and utilize the MTA Staten Island resident rebate is $5.50. For those Staten Islanders paying $5.50, the loss of those programs would mean their trip, their per trip cost more than double, even when they're utilizing the easy pass discount. For a Staten Island family, this means the loss of a significant amount of money. Assuming a Staten Islander drives to work five days a week, it means about 20 trips a month. With the current discount and rebate, that is about 110 months in tolls. This, was, this would jump to $245 a month with the elimination of these programs. Spread out over a year, those currently paying about 1,320 in tolls will be paying about 2,900 in tolls. For those families, particularly those in difficult times, this is a huge and unaffordable increase. This is unacceptable. We are held captive by the Arizona Bridge and its ever-increasing toll. As the MTA goes through this process, it must state clearly and unmistakably that our resident discount and rebate are safe and will not be tampered with, not now nor ever. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. As a reminder, if you've joined the Zoom under a name that is not what you registered to speak under, please identify yourself with the name used for registration in the Q&A function. Our next speaker is Assemblymember Robert Carroll, followed by Assemblymember Judy Griffin. Good morning, uh, board, and thank you for having me. I'm Assemblymember Robert Carroll, and I join today to urge all of you to not increase the fare on our buses and subways. I think it is highly imprudent in these crisis times when bus and subway ridership is at only 30% of pre-pandemic levels to raise the fare. What New Yorkers and what the MTA needs to do is we need to incentivize people when it is safe to go back onto our buses and subways. And the only way we do that is to make sure that it is affordable. I understand that the operating budget of the MTA is under extreme stress and that we all need to work with our federal representatives for a bailout. And we need to work with our state representatives to come up with new revenue streams for the MTA. And I urge all of you to work with the governor and the state legislature on novel ideas to raise revenue for the MTA so that we do not have to increase the fare. These ideas could go in scope from anywhere from a millionaire's or billionaire's tax to a novel idea around taxing non-essential package deliveries uh, delivered uh, by online uh, retail stores. Any of these would help sure up the budget of the MTA. I would like to note that I do not think it is imprudent to raise the fares on bridges and tunnels. Um, these bridges and tunnels are at 90% of their pre-pandemic levels. 
this has been brought back to normal use and thus should be part of the regular two year toll and fare hike. But again, not our buses and subways. Thank you. Thank you. We've also been joined by Commissioner Mujica. The next speaker is Assemblymember Judy Griffin, followed by Assemblymember Stacy Pfeffer Amato. Okay, can you hear me, Alex? Hello? We can hear you. Oh, great, thank you. Um, hello, I'm Assemblywoman Judy Griffin, representing AD21, which is Southwestern Nassau County. I'd like to thank Chairman Foy, President Phil Ang, um, uh, Kevin Law, and um, all the rest of the board members for having this hearing. Um, I just wanted to uh, speak on this to say that I'm adamantly opposed to any fair hike. Commuters on Long Island and my district and everywhere else already pay far too much. There's been um, fare hikes every two years, pretty much. And of course the board. And um, now with COVID, it's definitely not the time to raise fare hikes. We have essential workers who have never left the railroad and they certainly shouldn't be paying more to ride the, ride the railroad. And um, we have many commuters who are, have, are still working from home. And before you, your goal is to get them back to the Long Island Railroad, but unfortunately, many have uh, spoken to me about their uh, fear for the lack of safety because there's just a very low adherence to guidelines. Many, you know, complain about many people not wearing masks, not being social distanced. So for these reasons, um, I think. The, any fare, fare increase is just unwarranted and the same. Many commuters then have to go in and take a bus or a subway. So across the board, I think this is not the time. Um, despite fiscal issues and with all of the challenges, I think money has to be found another way. It cannot be found from the commuters. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to speak and I hope you will uh, find another way to um, get out of this fiscal crisis, but that one that does not involve hiking up fares for any commuters on Long Island or in the city or in the boroughs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Assembly Member Stacy Pfeffer-Amato, followed by Council Member Idanis Rodriguez. Assembly Member Stacy Pfeffer Amato. I'm here. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Where is my one second? I don't know why I'm challenged today. Okay. There we go. Good morning. Come on, thank you for that. Good morning, everybody. I hope you and your family are well during these challenging times. My name is Stacy Pfeffer Amato, and I am the New York State Assemblywoman representing the 23rd District, encompassing South Queens and some of the vastest transit deserts in all of New York. Let me begin by stating unequivocally, under no circumstances should the Rockway rebate or the future Queens resident rebate be altered, and the bonding of revenue off the Cross Bay Bridge toll should end immediately so we could stop this unjust toll outright in the future. We need to use this time to be more innovative about raising revenue in ways that will not impact the hardworking people of my district who have to pay a toll to go to the doctor, drop their kids off, or go grocery shopping in the same borough. The residents rebate along with the fares that the MTA sets factor into the decision-making about people's lives. If they can no longer afford to take public transportation or pay the tolls they must pay to go to work, we risk losing that population altogether. Additionally, draconian service cuts and radical layoffs for the brave men and women who ran our transit system at the height of this pandemic is an insult to working people everywhere, especially after all they have sacrificed. These changes would result in a fundamental alteration of our city and would severely impact the lifeblood of our 24-7, 365 economy that makes New York City the economic driver, not just of the country, but of the world. 
Now is the time to raise fare. Now is not the time to raise fares, tolls, and cut services. That is why it is crucial that the federal government provide aid to the MTA and to families that have been hit hard by the pandemic. New Yorkers are tough and resilient, and we will move forward together. But we need to get on board and make sure that the MTA and all of its facilities stay accessible to everyone and serve as the driver of opportunity for millions of New Yorkers who depend on it every day. I am wanting and willing to partner with you however we could in the state legislature, and we have to work with our federal partners. And I feel the hope that you feel now that the president has changed. Thank you very much. I wish you all a good holiday month. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. The next speaker is Council Member Idanis Rodriguez, followed by Sal Albanese. Thank you uh, to the Chair Bob Foy and to all the members of the MTA. I believe that as a chairman of the Transportation Committee, uh, with the opportunity that I have to oversight the MTA, we've been working, uh, being fair to the MTA and always advocating to, for the largest transportation system in the nation to have all the support from the federal, the state and the city and from the private sector. I know that this is a difficult moment, probably one of the most difficult moments in the history of the MTA, especially to the leadership of this large institution. I'm calling for you guys to postpone the plan to increase the fear until the new administration take office in January. I think that very soon we will leave behind the nightmare that we've been living in as a city of New York, as the MTA being the heart of the a economic a sectors for the for the public and private a, in our Northeast region. I think that when President Biden and Harris take office with the New York City congressional delegation with Senator Schumer and his leadership, we will get the support that we need for the MTA to deal with the financial crisis and not to bring another taxes, especially to the working class. So my call is for the MTA to please postpone plan to increase the fear until the new administration take office, who I believe will provide the financial support that I need, that the MTA need. And also for the MTA to explore a plan on where, how we can raise more revenue by developing in the uh, rail yard that we have in Queens and Northern Manhattan, working with the public and private sector, bringing back the plan a, or adopting a station so that the, the private sector also will be engaged and will be part of the solution. Thank you for your to comment. The revenue that we need. Nosotros necesitamos asegurarnos que la MTA eh, no haga un plan de aumentar eh, la tarifa en este momento, que se espere que la administración de Biden Harris tome el poder para que reciba la ayuda necesaria. Thank you. Our next speaker Thank is you. Sal Albanese followed by Commissioner Alan Capelli. As a reminder to all of our speakers, there will be a brief transition as you're enabled. Turn on your camera and microphone, and please make sure that once your screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled, and then begin your remarks. Thank you. Uh, good, good morning. Um, I'm Sal Albanese, uh, a former member of the New York City Council. Uh, I'm testifying to register my firm opposition to the elimination of the Verrazano Bridge resident discount. It will be a devastating blow to many residents already reeling from the economic damage of uh, the pandemic. Staten Island, Staten Islanders are subject that to one of the most expensive tolls in the country. The discount mitigates some of the pain to eliminate it would be a disastrous blow. In my family alone, Three of my relatives who are educators in Brooklyn have to travel by car over the bridge. This means a non-affordable increase of thousands of dollars per year. Let me also point out that, as you all know, the MTA is controlled by Governor Cuomo. And I'm asking him to stop this proposal in its tracks. 
it should have never been considered because it already has caused stress and anxiety amongst all island residents. Uh, you can register it on Facebook and people are really upset and they're already upset because of this terrible pandemic. And this proposal should have never been initiated. And I'm asking all of you uh, to stop it in its tracks. Uh, I would ask that you take the proposal off the table now and help Staten Islanders who already are suffering from uh, tremendous stress and anxiety because of this terrible, terrible plague. Thank you for listening. And uh, once again, take this proposal off the table. Have a great day. Thank you. Our next speaker is Commissioner Alan Capelli, followed by Gerard Bringman. Hello? We can hear you. Okay, can you see me? Oh, okay. Now we can see you. Okay. Uh, Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm back. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's good to see uh, all of you again. Uh, my colleagues for eight years as I served on the MTA board, served on its finance committee, uh, capital construction, uh, and chaired bridges and tunnels. Uh, <clears throat> I currently am uh, a member of the New York City Planning Commission, uh, but I'm here in my own capacity and the views I uh, express are uh, wholly my own. Uh, it's no surprise that uh, as many of you have heard me over the eight years I served on the MTA board, uh, the Verrazano Bridge discount uh, is a remedy that I spoke of often uh, with uh, a lot of passion because uh, not a lot of people understand, except for perhaps uh, the constituents of uh, Assemblywoman uh, Amato, at just how isolating a toll is separating us from the rest of the city from, uh, from a financial place. Uh, I used to say that you could travel to uh, Manhattan to see Tony Bennett uh, sing and not have to pay a toll, but if you went to St. George in Staten Island, uh, you were hit with... Uh, an enormous toll in order to do that. It creates an economic hardship for our local businesses and uh, it uh, 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 affects the uh, families who live here. So I would ask that that be taken off the table. I don't welcome the decision that you guys have to make. Uh, I remember the pain that we had during the service cuts and fares uh, after the 2008 crisis. Uh, I would only say that uh, I agree with uh, Commis uh, Commissioner uh, Andrew Albert that service cuts need to be taken off the table as please well. Please conclude your remarks. Uh, uh, please. Uh, one of the worst things that we ever did as a board was to cut service for people who were dependent upon them to go to their doctor uh, and uh, conduct their uh, everyday affairs. I wish you all luck uh, and uh, Godspeed. Thank you for your comment. The next speaker is Gerard Bringman, followed by Patrick Mooney. The next speaker is Patrick Mooney, followed by Vittorio Bugatti. Patrick Mooney. Yes, this is uh, Patrick Mooney, just checking um, to make sure you can hear me. We can hear uh, you. I'm a resident of Staten Island, like long resident, uh, an employee of Wagner College here on Staten Island. And um, as a resident, it's um, we, I rely on the bridge to get into Manhattan, um, to see plays, go to restaurants, visit family. And so the, uh, an increase to the toll would be a real bur burden to me and my family. Um, and I ask that uh, you reconsider that proposal. Um, and I know that uh, Staten Islanders want to feel more part of the city 
and by keeping a, a low toll and making us um, more making this the other boroughs more accessible, it would be um, uh, an encouragement for us and make us feel like we're part of the city. Thank you. I yield my time. Thank you. The next speaker is Gerard Bringman, followed by Vittorio Bugatti. Hello. Can you... Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Sorry about having some technical difficulties on my end. Uh, hello, my name is Gerard Bringman and I'm the chair of the Long Island Railroad Commuters Council. This is clearly a year like no other. We recognize the MTA's dire financial situation and urge Congress to pass a stimulus package that includes relief for the riders. The alternative is inconceivable. It's almost impossible for us to comment on fare increases when we don't know what the service will look like. We've heard the possibility of cuts up to 50%. We know that in any other cycle, it would be time to consider fare increases, but this year is different. Many riders don't need to travel the same way, and it may be years before they do again, if ever. It isn't a time to give them an excuse to stay off the trains, but to encourage them to come back. We need stimulus. We need congestion pricing. We need access to all the funds Washington provide. What we don't need is talk of a fare hike. Paying up to 4.3% for monthlies, and 5.9% for weeklies for half the service is a huge disincentive to getting people back on board. We cannot support these proposed increases. Under any other circumstances, we would support a nominal increase for other ticket types with limited or no service cuts. But these are not other circumstances. And this year, like no other, there is an opportunity for creative thinking and ticketing that reflects the changing way we travel. We would support a discounted 20, 40, or 60 trip ticket with longer expiration time, say six months, that could replace the traditional monthly. We would like to see off-peak fares retained until 50% of weekday ridership returns. And we also recommend that you further incentivize off-peak travel. We'd also like to hear more about what alternate revenue streams the Wild Railroad MTA is looking at and cost-saving measures undertaken to offset fare increases. It would make the bad news more bearable. Finally, we are not in the habit of commenting on subway and bus fares, but again, this is a year like no other. With so many Long Island Railroad riders traditionally buying a Metro card, we support maintaining the 30-day unlimited subway and bus fare option. Thank you. Apologies for the technical difficulties. Thank you. Our next speaker is Vittorio Bugatti. As a reminder, there will be a brief transition as you're enabled to turn on your camera and microphone. Please make sure that once your screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled and then begin your remarks. Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Vittorio Bugatti and I'm the leader and founder of the Express Bus Advocacy Group. It's troubling that we're here again discussing fair heights when we just had one earlier this year. As an Express Bus commuter and an advocate for thousands of Express Bus commuters in the outer boroughs, where we have no subways and some of the longest commutes, not only in New York City, but in the country, I am here to say that we cannot afford more increases. Express bus commuters are the only commuter group in New York City that do not have a monthly Metro card pass. We only have a weekly one, which is more expensive than the monthly pass. And it is imperative that it is kept and that uh, the monthly Express bus pass is reinstated given that many express bus riders are essential workers who work in our hospitals and have held the city together during this global pandemic that has ravaged our city. What we need from the MTA is the following. We need you to address your fare beating problem. The board spent most of last year discussing rampant fare beating issues. 225 plus million dollars lost, lots of discussions, no solutions or plans implemented. Cost savings should not include things like no express bus being sent out, when one breaks down, which can mean an hour plus wait for commuters. And numbers two and three, these are addressed to uh, Mr. Cipriano. Mr. Cipriano, we need our express buses on bus time to be trackable, and we need the missing bus saga to be addressed out of Spring Creek Depot. Riders in Southeast Brooklyn are tired of the missing buses morning and night. 
it's especially the downtown loop service from Barclay and uh, in church. We need a dispatcher down there to address those issues. And in finishing, express bus commuters have no board representation, zero on the MTA board. And that's why I started the advocacy group. We need a voice for out of borough residents of Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx who have no subway access and the least transportation options. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Our next speaker will be assembly member Eric Delon, followed by Nafi Diallo. And as a reminder, if you've joined the Zoom under a name that is not what you registered to speak under, please identify yourself with the name used for registration in the Q&A function. Thank you. Assembly member Eric Delon. Nafi Diallo. Our next speaker will be Ranti Ogunleya, followed by Iman Rimawi. Ranti Ogunlea. We'll move to Iman Ramawi, followed by Tremel Thompson. As a reminder, there will be a brief transition as you're enabled. Turn on your camera and microphone. Make sure that once your screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled and then begin your remarks. Hi, good morning. My name is Iman Ramawi and I work for New York Lawyers for the Public Interest as their access ride coordinator and organizer. We are living in troubling times. With the second wave of COVID looming and economic hardship hitting the people of New York City at an alarming rate, this is not the time for a fare increase. Many people who use Accessoride live at or below the poverty line. I remember what it was like getting a measly $1,000 a month from Social Security, and I had to get creative in order to afford my rent, food, things around the house, transportation, and any emergencies. Oftentimes, Accessoride barely made the cut. And I can't tell you how many times I paid my fare in pennies because it's all I had at the time. I know there currently aren't any fares being charged for Accessoride, but I also know this isn't permanent, which means raising a fare will eventually disproportionately hurt Accessoride customers who are already struggling to afford a ride. Luckily, the city's fair fares program will go into effect for Accessoride once the fare is put back in place but not everyone qualifies for fair fares and they will have to pay the increase. That doesn't sound like equity and equality to me. I know these are extremely hard times for the MTA and I know the federal government has been, uh, has been limited in help, but I'm urging you to find other sources of funding and not use uh, the riders for it. I'm urging you to not um, use your customers to make up the difference. We don't have the money either especially if I'm already paying 300 to 400 a month to use my Accessoride. Accessoride users are also losing our jobs, housing, food, and our lives, and we truly can't afford to lose anything else. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Tramel Thompson, followed by Alexander Kemp. Um, you know, Y'all hear me out there? We can. All right. Um, you know, nothing angers me more than going into a store, needing a bottle of Lysol, and seeing the price being $15. It's the same thing with you guys raising the fares and the tolls. Um, it's price gouging and it's fare gouging. Um, people need the MTA. 
Uh, and it's pretty much extortion because you guys uh, know you, you're the only game in town. Now, without a doubt, the MTA need financial relief. But one thing that the MTA need relief from is the people who make the decisions to spend this money. You guys spend money like you're growing trees. And this is an example. I need to know one company on earth that spends $11 million in legal fees every two to three months. We're talking close to 50 million a year. Is that really necessary spending? And this don't even touch on the consultants or the contractors where you probably could save half a billion, a billion dollars alone. Now, something needs to be done about the lack of accountability um, for the spending and the immunity that the MTA get for the egregious spending here. It needs to end. And let's be clear, the financial crisis been here well before the pandemic. The financial crisis is well in play because there's no checks and balances on the way you guys spend money. I'm still trying to figure out who you guys represent, the entire North America, who spends nor who spends $11 million in three months in legal fees. It's very egregious. Um, but now I see that big stick management don't only apply to the rank and file. Big stick management now applies to the rotten public. Raising affairs on the rotten public in the middle of a pandemic is nothing but extortion. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you for your comment. The next speaker is Alexander Kemp, followed by Edwin Huero. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? We can. Hi, good morning, panel. Um, thank you for, for giving me the time. Uh, I'm a bus operator on New York City Transit. I work at a Jackie Gleason bus depot. And um, watching you guys consider raising the fares, um, the effects of that in real time, uh, in separate from the offices that you sit in, is extremely dangerous on an enormous amounts of levels. Uh, raising the fare disproportionately affects the people who actually take mass transit in the first place, people who are of minimal means, people who have, as Tremel stated, can't afford other means of transportation. So they're forced to use the transit system. Uh, you threaten them by cutting the service. Um, if your agenda is to collect more money, by reducing service, I don't see how that can be achieved. Uh, if you threaten to cut 40% of the service, you are then threatening to cut 40% of the revenue. Um, you do not tell someone you're going to ask them for more money while making them wait an extra half hour for a bus. Um, there are several agencies that have been thriving throughout this pandemic, one of them being Wall Street. Uh, it has never been considered because who it offends when we talk about charging them for additional support. There should be a 25 cents tax on every trade done on Wall Street. Um, that money should help supplement the, the city that helps Wall Street become the greatest trade or greatest financial system in the world. How is it that they are the only agency that has been able to thrive throughout the pandemic, but yet all the residents of this city become the burden bearers for big banks and Wall Street? Um, at the end of the day, as a bus operator in New York City Transit, I am well aware of the consequences of you raising the fares and it ultimately leads to us being assaulted and, and people, uh, real citizens in New York, suffering the burden. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Edwin Wero, followed by Russell Grotto. Edwin Wero. Well. 
Russell Grotto. Hey everyone, how's it going today? My name is Russell Grotto. I've been riding the train for the past five years, uh, every single day, including all throughout the entire pandemic. I can't stress enough that now is not the time to raise the fare. People in New York are struggling. And for the MTA to sit here and say that COVID is the reason that the MTA is in debt, the MTA has been in debt for a while. It's not a secret for that. And while COVID has exacerbated the problems, there are other ways and other reasons that causes debt to build up to the way it has. The MTA has not shown enough initiative in order to get private sector involvement within the MTA. There was always talk about adding bar carts and adding more food, but none of that has ever happened. And while during a pandemic might not be the best time to add food, there is other ways to do it, and especially after the pandemic, to do this, to continue to add revenue. Furthermore, there needs to be more incentivization for people that ride the train long term. A monthly pass costs $250. That person is willing to make a commitment for a month, and I'm sure they would make it for a year. People that are willing to make long-term investments into the MTA and ride should be rewarded with a lower price, not being charged more money for that. It's backwards thinking. People that also ride the train on daily rates shouldn't be forced to pay more. They're riding that because they can't afford the monthly pass because it costs too much money to get. The whole thinking for that is backwards. It should be lower to incentivize people. There also needs to be more work done to make people that ride the train feel safe. Airlines have done a good job in making people feel safe. There's not nearly enough going on on the train to make people know that while they're on the train, they won't be exposed to COVID. I can't say how many times people put their mask on when they see the conductor and immediately take it off. People are not being held responsible for that. And it's not allowing people to feel comfortable riding the train anymore. Uh, furthermore, I'm not sure what led to this, but many people used to ride the quiet car during it, especially going to and from work. And it's been eliminated with COVID for some reason. And that doesn't make any sense either. People need to be able to feel comfortable riding the train, especially during COVID. And, and, and raising the fares at this time makes no sense. It's not the people's fault that this is happening. It's your guys. Thank you for your comments. Next speaker, William Denham, followed by Hockling Ding. William Denham. Hockling Ding. Our next speaker is Whit Harris, followed by Megan Mimji. Hello, my name is Whitney Harris, Whit Harris. I'm from Brooklyn, born and raised, and I'm an artist and master of fine arts at Hunter College. It goes without saying that a fair increase during this economic recession brought on by the pandemic will add even more financial challenges to the already overwhelming burden that New Yorkers like me are facing. Having been one of the first cities to reckon with this plague, we are still collectively reading from its health and financial impact as early as late February. When I was sick with COVID in early March, I was debilitated for a week and it impaired my ability to attend school and work my freelance artist job where I don't earn money when I'm not present. I'm still, I'm stuck dealing with the aftermath of that illness, as well as the subsequent months long shutdown during the spring and summer that prevented me from earning any income. I have gone on unemployment, I've taken out an emergency student loan, and I have depleted all of my savings. Now that I am able to stabilize my health and begin dealing with the accumulated debt from the aforementioned setbacks, the MTA has proposed a fair increase. 
a monthly Metro card costs $127, which is $27 more than the government has offered me every week for unemployment. I cannot ask for more money from my employer. I am my, um, em I am my employer. And my clients are also struggling with financial problems because of the pandemic crisis. While I am lucky to be a student and be able to attend my studio and complete work for my program, a fair increase will only make it that much more difficult to actually go to the studio and do that work. Not only is this increase a burden, but since lockdown, the subways are increasingly dangerous and I have to arrange my schedule so that I avoid the still crowded service hours where people do not wear masks or socially distance and also the late night hours where people not only don't wear masks, but also prey on single women. For what I am already paying, I do not see a return on my investment and I am hearing nothing about an increase in service quality. The MTA needs to get their money elsewhere. This seemingly minuscule cost is part of an accumulation of demands for New Yorkers' labors, and not only further Thank you for your comments. It also does not. Our next speaker is Megan Mimji, followed by Richard Levin. Our next speaker is Megan Mimji, followed morning, by. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, good Richard morning, Levin. Sorry. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. My name is Megan. I'm originally from COVID, but now live in Massapequa and have been writing with the LAR and the MTA for almost a decade now. Um, I just want to say that whatever zone structure or proposal the MTA adopts it should not include raising fares or eliminating the few unlimited passes available. The constant increases are becoming a barrier to utilizing these services for myself and to many other commuters I know. And while the pandemic has been hard on everyone, the LIR raising fares will not encourage riders to return or solve the ongoing problems the MTA seems to have with how they manage their funds. Riders should not bear the brunt of the MTA's issues and the continue raising fares is just taking advantage of our community's very basic need for public transportation. At this point, the LIR and the MTA need to consider how to make public transportation more accessible and not less. Thank you. I see the rest of my time. Our next speaker is Richard Levin. Just as a reminder, there will be a brief transition as you are enabled to turn on your camera and microphone. Please make sure that once your screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled and then begin your remarks. Our next speaker is Matt Cohen, followed by Beata Samo. Please begin your remarks. Not hear you, please unmute. Yes, okay. 
I, I would like to urge the MTA to be creative and bold in their decision making here. Um, I, obviously, there's a need to raise revenues, and I think we could do this in a, in a bold and innovative way. My understanding is when City Field was built a few years ago, there was a thought to change the name of that station um, from Mets Willits Point to maybe City Field. And I think the idea to changing names of stations and selling that to the private sector would be a way to raise significant funds. Imagine the idea of selling the name of Columbus Circle to Pepsi or to change the name of Union Square to Whole Foods and the ability to raise money that way. I think the way to raise money in a way that's unique, different, and bold, I think is something that needs to be considered. Perhaps even changing the name of a bridge or a tunnel to Vandalay Industries or anything like that. I think if rather than asking the people who ride the subway to who don't have money to put in more money to the subway is tricky. And I think if we're able to bring in the private sector to raise funds, I think might be a way to for this to work. Um, personally, I think the idea to maybe change the next station is 47, 47th Street and say 47th Street sponsored by XYZ organization. There's a way. There's a way that I think the private sector would be willing to put in money to help the city rebuild and obviously get money for and, and value for their partnership and sponsorship. I think it's something that should be considered. Um, I think this. I, I'm sure some some people might think this idea is crazy and, and out of line, but given given where we are in this country and given where we are financially, I think something bold and challenging could be considered. Thank you for the opportunity, and uh, and I yield my time. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Beata Samu, followed by Kevin W. Hello, my name is Beata Samo. I live in Copenhagen, New York. Um, I've been taking the LIRR for 10 years to get from Long Island to New York City. I'm here today to tell you that absolutely no one who takes the LIRR or takes MTA in the city um, supports, uh, wants, or can afford any fare increases. And as someone who also has to take the LIRR to get around Long Island, I could say any proposal um, to change zoning or increase fares within Long Island um, is not desirable and is not something any of us can afford. So thank you, I cede my time. Thank you for your comment. Our next speaker is Kevin W, followed by Zen Yu Li. Hi, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, Kevin actually had to go to another meeting. This is Dina. I'm his wife, so I'll take the opportunity here uh, to make our remarks. Uh, we are a long-term resident of Staten Island and a concerned citizen. After hearing the news that uh, you might raise the tolls again, um, I second the opinion of uh, the prior speaker. I think we are in a very um, difficult situation, especially given the pandemic. So by raising the tolls and fares again, I think you're hurting the people that um, are in Stan Island. It's not, you know, just the, just the children, the parents, the restaurant workers, healthcare workers, retail workers, but the, all the many people who are now in a very difficult time and they're uh, trying to budget for life during the pandemic. And it really saddens me to see, you know, such negative news around the MTA these years, around the trains running behind to you know, federal investigations on some of the employees being overpaid, um, 400,000 over, in overtime. Um, I think you know, these facts do not ensure the public confidence on the operational efficiency. I think we should, we're hoping that you can work on that and you know, give the citizens some relief. Um, but I do understand that it's a special time, but I'm really hoping that uh, you can have the citizens in your mind and work with us throughout this difficult time. Thank you so much. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker, Tashira Riojas, followed by Amelia Steves. Me? 
Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Yes, hi. Um, I am a local Bronx resident, and I am opposed to the fair hike because, hold it, I am unmuted by the host. Hold it now. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, I'm a local uh, uh, Bronx resident, and I'm opposed to the to uh, the fair hike because riding the train is not safe. And also, I think that the MTA needs a process of, of checks and balances regarding on how they spend their money because they always waste money, waste money, waste money, and then the burden is put upon the people who work. I am affected by by COVID during this time, and I have to wait a long time to take uh, the 21 bus uh, um, around Boston Road and Tremont. And also, I think it's unfair, uh, the fair increase, basically, like, for the people who are struggling uh, financially. Because if you don't have enough money to take care of yourself, how are you going to actually have money to pay for a metro car? That's, to me, it doesn't make sense. And I think MTA can be very creative if they choose to, to find other sources regarding raising money besides putting the burden on the working class people. I don't hear anyone in MTA saying, I'll take a pay cut or I'll take a pay cut, I'll do this. I don't, I don't hear anyone saying that from from like MTA, especially a president, because yeah. so my time is up and I am my time. Thank you for, for like your time and enjoy your day. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Amelia Steves, followed by Omar Vera. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm a Staten Island resident as well as someone who uses um, the monthly regular Metro card as well as the express bus. Um, this reducing, um, getting rid of the Staten Island residency discount I believe will be detrimental to most Staten Islanders as that all of us require going off Staten Island at some point or another, as well as getting rid of the seven day pass and the 30 day pass will be detrimental to most of New York City as that most people budget their income based on doing the seven day pass and the 30 day pass, as well as increasing the express bus. The express bus is already expensive and one of the most reliable means of transportation off of Staten Island in a borough that is already detrimentally impacted by the lack of public transportation. As someone who lives on Mid Island, it would take me 40 minutes on a regular bus to get to the ferry versus the express bus that usually gets me into Manhattan in an hour during the, the peak times. Um, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Omar Vera, followed by Sean Thompson. Yes, I'm here. Hello? Thank you. Yes, you we can, can hear, hear you. you. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is um, Omar Vera, as you all know, and um, I'm a transit advocate, transit writer, and transit enthusiast. Now, um, today, I, I want to first express the opposition to these fair and toll changes. Well, frankly, I've been expressing opposition to this for years, but this is especially not the time to do it, considering the economic condition we're in due to the um, SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. And um, and like I said, I've long been an advocate for reducing the fare back down to $2, the base fare as it was from 2004 through 2009. But what we really need, uh, um, instead of like this fare change, the fare toll change is um, to get federal aid support. Now we just had a presidential election and the election is in, the fa is in our favor as now we have gotten rid of a, of a clown of an executive and replaced them with good people in this historic election. And hopefully when, uh, when they take um, office in January, we can get a new COVID relief A uh, like package. We desperately need one and we need this one to avert, um, avert basically the possible um, devastating service cuts. We remember the service cuts from 2010. Yeah, but those are nothing compared to what, what will come if we, don't, if we don't have aid. But also that um, we also, um, we all need to like work together to to overcome this this entire this entire mess we're in, and we also need democratic control of the Senate, which which is why we must endorse 
must support John Ossoff and Ralph Warnock for their Senate seats that they're um, competing, that they're trying to win in January in the state of Georgia. Then with Democratic control of the Senate, we can actually we can actually get things done since we already control the House. Well, with that said, um, I'm going to yield the balance of the time now because I'm going to be speaking in the other public hearings because I have more to say. But for now, I yield the balance of my time. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Sean Thompson, followed by Anthony Lento. Just as a reminder, there will be a brief transition as you are enabled to turn on your camera and microphone. Please make sure that once your screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled, and then begin your remarks. Our next speaker is Jerry Wade, followed by Hannington Dia. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, good morning. My name is Jeremiah Wade. I'm a station agent, and uh, we put our blood, sweat, and tears on the line during this pandemic, you know, for ourselves, our family, and our coworkers. And we have 155 approximately dead employees. And we just worked hard. We was deemed as essential workers and we made sure we came in every day and did what we had to do. And for now, for us to hear layoffs is just a slap in the face to the workforce. After we, we were like human sacrifices, sacrificial lambs and basically just pawns on a chessboard. The MTA as a worker, they need to combat the fair evasion. If they combat the fair evasion with the Eagle team that they have, and the transit police and get together with Cuomo and de Blasio and start, you know, collecting and collecting and, and finding people for hopping trains, transit will considerably make a, a good, great amount of money. Also, if you want to cut fat, why don't you cut fat in management? As you have so many people in management and these executive board positions making six figure salaries outrageous salaries literally doing nothing such as Anthony McCord and um it's just and, and we need to bring the money back to the booth there's no reason that the money is not back in the booth and as a station agent I can say it's bringing much discord between the community and the workers and transit has no answer for it and we're trading in multi fare car reduced fare cars but we're not touching cash there's no reason we shouldn't be touching cash it's just a ploy for them you know, to seem to beg for more money from the government. Just bring the money back to the booth. We all know what's really going on as the workforce, as the workers. All right, thank you. I yield my time. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Hannington Dia, followed by Ralph Guarneri. Hello, can you want to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, my name is Hannington Dia. I'm a train operator for the New York City Transit Authority. And uh, in regards to this um, fair hike, proposed fair hike, fair cuts, it's just um, a shame that the topic of sacrifice is always usually given to the worker when I, as a transit worker, and my comrades have given the ultimate sacrifice of over 131 of our lives to keep the system running. 
We were the horses who pulled the carts that kept this city alive through the pandemic. And despite the fact that you guys had a pandemic plan from 2012, you never implemented, despite the fact that you guys tried to discipline us for trying to wear masks, basically, despite all these misgivings against us, we still came and we still moved the city. And we're being rewarded by saying that now it's time to cut 40% of service and this to that and the third, rather than looking at these contractors and these consultants who get paid millions of bucks to come up with these useless expansion studies for expansions that aren't going to happen to line their pockets. And to the extent of these cuts, as I understand it, the 12 billion is not needed in one shot. It's needed amongst multiple years. As I understand it, this year alone, 2.4 billion will be needed to keep the MTA whole through the end of 2020. 2020. You could apply for at least the Fed's municipal liquidity, liquidity facility, for example. There's things you can apply for. There's grants you can apply for, cutting contractors, basically. There's fact you can cut other ways, but we have to take it. These cuts are racist. They're attacking Black and Latin workers mostly. And we need to understand that minorities are the ones who are going to be hit hardest by this, and that transit workers have given so much already. And the transit workers and the ridership have to come together and understand that these cuts not just are going to attack transit workers, but they're going to attack people as well. And the MTA has to realize that. And the MTA management needs to realize that, basically. We run the city, not them. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Ralph Guarnieri. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I just wanted to talk briefly about um, the uh, fare increases, and uh, especially I have some elderly friends that uh, rely on uh, a monthly Metro card. Um, they're not able to drive anymore, and uh, raising uh, or cutting those those uh, discounts for those senior citizens would be devastating on them. Uh, it would limit their travel. Uh, they would need to spend more time at home. Also, they're, most of them are living on a fixed income, uh, as well as I am. And I think that, at the very least, that should be a stayed. And then again, uh, the uh, I'm a Staten Island resident, so of course I'm in favor of keeping the residency rate. Again, like it was previously stated, we have no other choice when we uh, get in our car to go over a bridge and come back over a bridge. Uh, we don't have options. So I would hope that you would keep that in mind, especially since uh, we are going through hardships, all of us. And maybe you can come up with more creative ways to uh, adapt the budgets. Uh, okay, thank you for your, uh, for your time. Thank you for your comment. We've also been joined by New York City Transit Interim President Sarah Feinberg. We have several speakers registered to speak who have either had technical difficulties or have not joined the meeting. I'll call through the remaining speakers now. Once we've exhausted the list, we will leave the hearing open for an additional 15 minutes. If you're registered to speak but have not heard your name called, please indicate in the Q&A function and we will add you to the queue. State Senator Simha Felder. Assembly Member Eric Delon. Victor Trombetas. Jing Lin. Anne Denning, Michael DeMeo, Nafi Diallo, Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. All right, thank you. 
Um, my name is Nafi. I live in the Bronx. Um, I have a couple of concerns. First being um, the people proposing that we cut monthly unlimited Metro cards. I am a user of monthly Metro cards. I've been using it since I started college. Um, it has been six years. I've been using a monthly unlimited um, a monthly unlimited Metro card. And it's one of the ways that I'm able to save some money, although it's still very expensive. Um, since I started using it, it has been raised um, a few times, but I've still continued to purchase it because I don't have any other option. And although I purchased the monthly unlimited Metro cards, I don't see the service for what I'm paying for. If I am taking a six bus these days, it is still crowded. It does not make sense for a bus to be crowded in the middle of a pandemic. Not only that, it's always one bus and then you have to wait 15 minutes before another one comes or, some, or sometimes longer. And by that time, there's already too many people at the bus stop again, and now it's gonna be filled again. Um, I'm also worried about the fact that there aren't any, that MTA people aren't allowed to um, take cash at the booths. I feel like that's another hindrance to, for the people. Many people do not have, still do not have access to debit cards and other things who are not literate enough to use those machines. And those machines are often busted too. They aren't working and then, I, and then you have to travel to another station for it to work. So you're not ticketed or you're not jumping the turnstile or whatever it is. Um, in order to, if you're going to, I am against the ferries um, and I definitely feel like the service should be increased. If we're gonna be talking about fare increase, the quality of the service should also be increased. I thank you. Thank you for your comment. Jing Lin. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Yes, my name is Jane Lin. I want to make it clear that Staten Islanders cannot afford to lose the Rosano Bridge Staten Island residence discount and rebate. As we know, we have no subways to connect us to other boroughs. We rely on bridges to get to work and other activities outside the borough. MTA needs to maintain Staten Islander uh, resident discount and rebates. We cannot afford to unfairly pay more to balance MTA's budget. As for our public transportation options, the express bus fare is $6.75 per trip. Our travel cost is already very high and the service quality is already very low. We need MTA to consider better public transportation system for Staten Island. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you for your comment. Lawrence Edwards. Ronti Oglunlea. Daniel Shapira. As a reminder, there will be a brief transition as you're enabled. Turn on your camera and microphone. Please make sure that once your screen updates, your camera and microphone are enabled, and then begin your remarks. Edwin Huero.
Edwin Huero. Please unmute. Daria Alenknovich. William Denham. Patrick Johnson. Bob D. Hock Ling Ding. Richard Levin, Richard Levin, please unmute yourself. Zen Yu Li Morgan Pertel Zijin Tang Queenie Johnson, Na Lee, Sean Thompson, Sean Thompson, Nelian Vidal Badalamenti, Anthony Lento. Hello? We can hear you. Oh, oh great. Okay. Um, as a retired DOE teacher, I have enjoyed the Staten Island resident um, discount toll as it pertains to the Verrazano Bridge. So I can't imagine to even begin to think if I was still working full time today, facing a much higher toll rate, as well as paying other tolls, gas, vehicle, wear and tear, et cetera, et cetera. I believe that the resident toll discount should never be abolished and supplanted with any new uh, plan and, sub and subsequently a higher toll fee. This is akin to being the only supermarket, the only store to buy food from within a hundred mile radius. You force people to buy from you and you alone, and you can charge whatever you desire. Therefore, either you buy the food from that supplier or you starve. So 
I am now an independent contractor and I need to use the uh, Veritano Bridge, albeit less than I used to, but still a significant amount. If the discount goes by the wayside, I would be forced to raise my prices and subsequently lose many of my clientele for sure. Now you multiply me by thousands who live on Staten Island, benefiting from the resident uh, toll discount. The MTA can honestly opine that it is not taking enough money per day that would just justify the removal of the resident toll discount. I ask that the board is financially prudent towards the average working individual who are making a final decision in regard to the significant matter. I thank you for the time allotted and have a great day. Thank you. Alexander Rosenspit. Kathy Marte Garcia. Eric Chichanowski. Tracy Gordon. Roshni Kowal. The time is currently 11.29 a.m. At this time, we'll be taking a brief break while we leave the hearing open. We will resume at 11.40 a.m. During the break, please feel free to take the voluntary survey, which will be visible on your screen, to assist us in understanding the effectiveness of our outreach for these hearings. If you are registered to speak, but have not heard your name called, please indicate in the Q&A function and we will make sure that you are called. Thank you.
It's now 1139 and we will be resuming the public hearing in one minute. Welcome back to the public hearing. We will now read the names of registered speakers who have yet to speak one final time. Again, if you are registered to speak at this hearing but have not heard your name called, please indicate in the Q&A function and we will add you to the queue. Senator Simcha Felder. Assembly Member Eric Delon, Victor Trombettas, Anne Denning, Michael DeMeo, Lawrence Edwards. Ronti Ogunlea, Daniel Shapira, Edwin Cuero, can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, my my web camera doesn't work. That's why. Um, uh, I opposed. I mean, thank you for uh, for how do you call? Um, uh, thank you for hearing me. My uh, my my statements. I I've been writing the MTA for thirty years, and I never seen quite coming. I. I hear about 10 years ago saying that we have to cut the service from the MTA and it's getting, uh, my, my bus, my bus got eliminated by, uh, by the MTA 10 years ago. It's the, the express bus 29 uh, going from Midtown Manhattan to Coney Island and I've been opposed for this and this coming, uh, how do you call, um, this coming, um, coming, um, this um, proposal um, that we're facing. Donald Trump always say, leave, leave the, uh, everything dead, but I hate that. So thank you for calling me. Goodbye. Thank you for your comment. Daria Olenknovich. William Denham. Patrick Johnson. Bob D. Hockling Ding. Richard Levin. Zenyu Lee. Morgan Pertel. Zejun Tang, Queenie Johnson, 
Na Li. Sean Thompson. Sean Thompson. Yes, hi. We can hear you, please proceed. <laughs> okay, yes, hi, my name is Sean. Um, I take the MTA to, uh, I live in New Jersey and I take the train every day to, the, to New York City to go to work. Uh, I, I buy the monthly train pass for, um, for the subway. The fare increase is not gonna work, especially if they're gonna take away the 30 day uh, Metro cards. Like, like I have friends who live in the city who are already like about to just not go to work because they can't even afford the current pricing, let alone a fair increase, especially at this time going into the new year. Um, or I just, I oppose the increase. They need to find funding from other sources. Like I understand that it's been, that they're having time, a hard time getting yeah, money from the federal government, but they need to find additional sources because if they ask the actual consumers to actually put more money for fares, people are just going to stop taking the train. Like the the amount of ridership is already down, and I feel like it's going to take a steeper decrease in ridership if people can't, you know, if people can't even afford it. Well, that's about it. Thank you for your comment. Nellian Vidal Badalamenti. Alexander Rosensevit. Kathy Marte Garcia. Eric Chichanowski. Tracy Gordon, Roshni Kowal, thank you all for joining us today. This concludes the third of eight virtual fair and toll hearings. Please visit new.mta.info forward slash 2020 hearings to register for an upcoming hearing. As a final reminder, in addition to the virtual hearings, there are several other ways you can provide comments, ask questions, or make remarks. We encourage the public to comment via the Fair and Toll Hearing website, new.mta.info forward slash 2020 hearings. You may also send a letter to MTA Government and Community Relations regarding fares and crossing charges virtual public hearing to Broadway, New York, New York, 10004, or call the public hearing hotline at 646-252-6777. Telephone agents are available from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. Thank you.